mentioned by Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah ta'ala. And he mentions a pious man. He says, there was a man, he used to fast throughout the day. And he used to pray Qiyamul Layl throughout the night. He never used to involve himself in anything that was haram. He knew that the people that were around him in his land were corrupt people. So he didn't sit in their gatherings because all they used to do was backbite and slander. So he stayed away from any gatherings. And he would just stay in his house and never leave his house. When he ran out of food, he would leave his house and he would store and he would buy enough food to last him as long as it can. And then he would remain in his house just worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of the land, they gathered together. And they said, look at this man. Does he think that he is better than us? He doesn't come and sit in our gatherings. He doesn't walk around or talk to us. We just see him and he looks down on the floor and he goes to the shop and he goes back to his house. Never did this man look right or left or even in front of him. He would just look down and walk. So the people became jealous of this man. And this is how they work. Shaitan doesn't just attack you by himself, but Shaitan has people that he has and he inspires his haram into them and he commands them to attack their believers. So this is what they did. So what they did was they looked around the land until they found the most beautiful woman in that land. And she was a young woman. And she was a chaste woman. And they approached her. And they said, we want you to seduce that man. And we want you to commit zina with that man. So she said, how can I do such a thing? And she was from amongst the most poorest women in that land. She found it very difficult to live. So they said to her, if you can do this, then we will give you the equivalent to your weight in gold. And even more than this. And all of this poverty that you are facing today, it will end. All you have to do is commit zina with that man. So the woman, she went home and she thought and she began to think. Until she looked at her situation and she thought, subhanallah, or she thought to herself, that there is nothing left for me. I'm going to die of poverty and I have nothing left. So she accepted the task that they had given her. And she said, I will go and I will commit zina with this man. So one cold night, she went and she knocked on the house of this man. She knocked on the door of the house of this man. So he opened the door and he saw a woman. So he closed the door. So she, be, so, so, she, so she raised her voice and she said, Please allow me to come into your house. I was traveling and I thought that I would reach my destination before night. But now, the, 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 the night has come and I'm in the middle of nowhere and I do not know where I am. I do not know anyone in this land. And if you do not accept me into your house, then I, I, I fear that something will happen to me outside. So he said, we have many neighbors around from the door. Please go and knock on the house of these neighbors and inshallah ta'ala, they will help you. So the woman, she left. A little while later, she knocked on his door again. And she said, I went to the houses of your neighbors, but no one is home. And it is really cold outside. And I fear that I may, part, I may die if, I, if you do not accept me and allow me to come into your house. So he said, just go further down the hills and you'll find that there are a few more houses over there. And inshallah ta'ala, they will allow you to live with them. He said, there is no one in my house. So it's not permissible for you to be with me. So the woman, she left. A little while later, she came back again. And she knocked on his door. So he opened the door and he saw the woman. And she said, Wallahi, if you do not allow me to come into your house, and if any man, he puts his finger on me, and he rapes me and he takes away my chastity, then Wallahi, on Yawm al Qiyamah, I will stand in front of Allah and say, you were the one who was the cause of this. It is because of you, he raped me. It is because of you, this happened. And I will blame it on you. And when he heard the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he became really scared. Why? Because إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Because the believers, when the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, their hearts begin to tremble. So this man, he became really scared. So he said, and he had two rooms in his house. So he said to her, he said, come and sit in this room. And do not knock on my door and do not say anything to me. As soon as the time of Fajr approaches, leave my house and continue with your journey. So the man, he left this woman in this room and he went into the second room that he had and he locked the door. And he continued with his recitation of Quran. Now the people of the land, they know that she has entered his house. 
So they have gathered around the house, waiting to catch the two of them committing zina. And this is a pious man. And he has never faced anything like this in his life. So he is in his house now, and he is reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this woman is ready to commit zina with this man. And the people of the land have gathered around the house, waiting to enter the house to catch them committing zina. The man now, he's reciting Quran. And the woman, she begins to scream. She screams and she screams and she screams. So the man, he opens his door and he walks into the room where the woman is. He has an oil, a fire lamp with him, an oil lamp with him. And he walks into the room where the woman is, only to find that she is lying on the floor without her clothes on. And she is calling him towards her. This man now, for the first time in his life, he is seeing something that he has never seen before. Because his gaze has always been lowered. He is feeling something in his heart now that he has never felt before. His mind is telling him things that he has never told him before. He has the most beautiful woman of the land in front of him, calling him for zina. What does he do? What would a person in this situation do? He has never seen anything like he has never seen anything like this in his life. The people now they know. They heard the first scream from the woman. So they know that very soon they will catch them committing zina. So they come closer to the door of the house of the man. The woman now all of a sudden begins to scream. And she screams and she continues to scream and scream and scream. The people of the land, they break down the door of this man, the, 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 the door of the house of this man. And they enter to find that the woman is on the floor. And the man is also on the floor. But the woman is in one side of the room. And the man is in the other side of the room. And the woman continues to scream. And she continues to scream. They look at the man and he is crying in the corner of the room. And his hand is in the fire of the lamp that he has. And he is crying and he is crying. And the woman is screaming. So they take the woman out of the house. And she says, take me away from this man. Because wallahi, the iman of this man is killing me. I see something in front of me that I cannot describe. And this has done something to my heart and my mind. The iman of this man is killing me, so take me away. And the man is crying in the corner. Because every single time the man, he took a step towards the woman, he put his hand in the fire that he had. And he said, remember the fire of Jahannam is hotter than the fire of this dunya until he would fall to the floor. And then, when he was able to stand up again, he would stand up again and take a step towards the woman. And when he took a step towards the woman again, he would put his hand back in the fire and say, remember the fire of the hand is more severe than the fire of this dunya. And he kept on doing this until his hand was left inside the fire. And the woman began to scream and she was taken away. Then this man, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, Oh Allah, forgive me for the sin that I have committed. What sin did this man commit? What did he do? He stayed away from zina. He stayed away from the most beautiful woman of the land. What sin did he commit? He said, Oh Allah, forgive me for the footsteps I took towards that woman. Look at the iman of this man. Look at the iman of the righteous people. Nothing will tempt them. Nothing will take them away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is calling you. Allah is calling you. Calling you to say His name. Allah is calling you. Calling you to come home.